Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuan. Let's draw the head of spin-offs in a side view. The head of spin-offs had many structures with different textures. Its beak and horns on the head were all hard structures made of keratin, but the rest of its face was skin. For some parts, we should draw with fine scales. When drawing, we should first pay attention to the use of lines and brushwork in each part, try to use a few simple strokes to represent well-defined textures, and make these textures slightly different. In addition, we also need to draw a few scales in some appropriate positions, and use this to clearly show the texture of the entire dinosaur head. Now, let's draw the side view of the spin-off's head. We draw a head close-up of a spin-off's facing to the right. Start with its eye, which is located a little lower to the right. Draw a small horn above the eye. and then show its eye socket. Now, we draw a horizontal line, extending forward to represent its flat nose. A relatively large nasal horn stood at the front of the nose. Next, we draw its mouth. When drawing the mouth, make sure to draw the line vertically since its face was quite short. The rear opening of the mouth can be drawn larger. Then, draw its jugal bone and ear. Now, we use dotted lines to draw the area of its nose. Its nostrils were situated at a quite lower position. Then, draw its lower jaw with a plumper rear and a narrow front. In this position, there is the border of the keratinous beak. We complete the other horn. Next, we move to its head frill. The endmost of the head frill would stop here. We first draw a dotted line to represent the edge of the frill. Its head frill would curve upwards when viewed from the side. There were two drooping horns on top of the head frill. It had iconic long rabbit ear-like horns, which we can draw to the top. Then, we draw the margin of the head frill on this side, followed by the shape of its squamosal bone in the front, and then the parietal bone. Next, let's draw its throat and the back of its neck. There would be some folds at the back of the neck due to the movement of raising its head. Next, we use lighter lines to draw the muscles on its head frill. Then, use thin lines to draw textures such as scratches or growth lines on the keratinous structures. Then, draw the boundaries between the small hornets and the skin on the margin of the head frill. Now, let's add some details. Assuming that the sun shines from the left, we can draw some scale-like structures on the right and also show the shadows. The bright areas on the left should be blank. We can draw some larger scales behind the eyes. Then, draw some scales on the lower right of the head frill close to the face, showing the skin texture and shadow structure. At the corner of the mouth, we draw some large scales. On the lips, we can also draw some large scales, resembling many lizards today.
Then, draw a few large scales on the upper lip. Draw some skin texture on the underside of the mouth, and then trace the mouth to make its line bolder. We can draw some shadows and scratches on its horns. On its keratinous beak, we draw some stripes to make it full of textures, indicating that it is hard and rough. On its face, we can use delicate lines to draw some large and small scales. Instead of covering the face full of scales, we leave some parts blank, and the lines can gradually become loose when it comes to the edge. These areas where there should be shadows, we must show them, Remember that the sun shines from the upper left, so the shadows should be concentrated on the right. A prominent shadow can be drawn on the lower part of the neck. The raised eye socket also had a shadow. Its head frill cast a shadow on its neck as well. Draw the outline first, then black the inside. Doing this will show the three-dimensional effect of the dinosaur's head. We can leave some tiny blank blocks to make the picture more breathable. This can also show the skin under the shadow was textured unevenly. The drooping horns on the head frill would also have shadows underneath them. On the head frill, we draw some large scales along its structure, mainly concentrated in the lower right of this area. We don't need to draw them too much, and very specific, just slightly show the texture of the scales. Then, transition the lines into dots slowly. On this side, we also use lines to transition to the blank area. Then, draw some intermittent lines appropriately to make the skin more textured. Lastly, we draw some big scales on the lower jaw. In this way, we finished the head of spin-offs.